Gregor Mendel was an Austrian monk who performed some of the first experiments in genetics. Genetics is the branch of science that studies patterns of heredity relating to genes. Gregor Mendel conducted thousands of experiments and made careful, detailed observations. His work laid the foundation for modern genetics. By cross-pollinating different types of pea plants, he discovered that physical traits are passed from one generation of plants to the next. In this lab, we will attempt to reconstruct one of Mendel's experiments. But instead of using pea plants, we will use plants with the scientific name Brassica rapa. Brassica rapa includes plants such as field mustard and turnips. However, the plants we will be growing are hybrids, which have been bred to grow to maturity in only a few weeks. This will allow us to complete the experiment in less time. In this lab, we will explore three discoveries Gregor Mendel made about genetics. First, physical traits of plants are inherited from parent plants. Second, genetic factors that produce physical traits in plants work together in pairs to produce those physical traits. And third, some traits are dominant while others are recessive. DNA is a complex organic compound containing the genetic code for each organism. A molecule of DNA is called a chromosome. The DNA of many organisms, including plants, contains two sets of chromosomes, one set from one parent and a nearly identical set from the other parent. A pair of matching chromosomes, one chromosome from the DNA of each parent, is called a chromosome pair. The portion of a chromosome containing the code for a particular physical trait is a gene. Each matching gene with a chromosome pair is an allele. One allele comes from a male gamete of one parent plant. The other allele comes from a female gamete of the other parent plant. Alleles work together in pairs, called gene pairs, to produce some of the physical traits in plants. One gene pair determines the shape and color of a plant's leaves. Another gene pair determines the type of flower the plant produces. The physical trait we will examine in this lab is stem color which is also determined by a gene pair. The process of passing genes from parent to offspring through successive generations is called biological inheritance. Evidence of the principles of biological inheritance can be seen in an organism's genotype and phenotype. The total genetic makeup regarding a single physical trait, including genes of expressed and unexpressed traits, is an organism's genotype. When genes in an organism's genotype are expressed as physical traits, those traits make up the phenotype of that organism. Phenotype is the set of expressed physical traits of an organism determined by its genes. Traits, such as the stem color or flower type of a plant, are part of its phenotype. Some Brassica rapa plants have alleles that produce purple stems. Other plants have alleles that produce green stems. Some plants have both types of alleles. If a gene pair contains two alleles for purple stems, the plant will express that trait. It will grow a purple stem. If a gene pair contains two alleles for green stems, the plant will express that trait it will grow a green stem. However, if a gene pair has one allele for purple stems and one allele for green stems, the plant will express the trait for the purple stem. The plant will express the trait for the purple stem because the allele for purple stems is dominant and the allele for green stems is recessive. A dominant allele is one of a pair of alleles in the genotype of an organism that is expressed in the phenotype. 
A recessive allele is one of a pair of alleles in the genotype of an organism, but it is not expressed in the phenotype if the allele for the dominant trait is present. The manner in which dominant alleles are expressed is stated in the principle of dominance. Whenever an allele for a dominant trait and an allele for a recessive trait exist together in an organism's genotype, the allele for the dominant trait will be expressed in the phenotype. A recessive trait can be expressed in an organism only if its gene pair contains two recessive alleles. During our experiment, we will demonstrate the principle of dominance with Brassica rapa plants. Three weeks ago, we planted two groups of plants, one group with purple stems and one group with green stems. The plants have already produced flowers. The genotype for plant stem color in the plants with purple stems had two dominant alleles. The genotype for plant stem color in the plants with green stems had two recessive alleles. We will cross-pollinate purple-stemmed plants with green-stemmed plants. The male part of a flower is the stamen. At the top of the stamen is the anther, which contains the pollen. The female part of a flower is the pistil. At the top of the pistil is a sticky pad called a stigma. Pollen grains stick to the stigma. To pollinate a plant, we transfer pollen from a stamen of one plant to the pistil of another plant using a pollination wand. Pollen is contained on the anthers of the flower's stamens. We see the anthers surrounding the pistil in the center of the flower. For our first transfer, we will collect some pollen from the anthers of a purple-stemmed plant. We brush the pollination wand several times across the tops of three or four anthers from the same flower. If we look closely, we can see the yellow pollen sticking to the wand. Next, we rub the pollination wand across the stigma at the top of a pistil in a flower of a green-stemmed plant. Pollen from anthers of the purple-stemmed plant will stick to the stigma of the green-stemmed plant. To indicate a plant has been pollinated, we stick the wand into the soil after the pollen has been transferred. To avoid contamination, we use a different wand for each pollination. After we have transferred pollen from each of the purple-stemmed plants to each of the green-stemmed plants, we transfer pollen from each of the green-stemmed plants to each of the purple-stemmed plants. Once all the flowers have been pollinated, we must wait until the seeds develop. Once the egg cells have been fertilized, the plants begin to die, and there is no need to water them. Two weeks following fertilization, the stems have dried up, some of the leaves and flower petals have fallen off, and seed pods have developed. We remove the seed pods and roll them between our fingers to release the seeds. We catch the tiny seeds on a piece of paper. Next, we plant the seeds and wait until they germinate to determine their stem colors. It will take about two weeks until the stem colors are evident. What do you think their offspring will look like? Will they have purple stems or green stems? We can predict the results of our experiment by using a Punnett square. A Punnett square is a visual model used to calculate the ratio of an offspring's possible genetic combinations if the genotype of each parent organism is known. Both alleles of a genotype are assigned a letter. A dominant allele is assigned an uppercase letter, and a recessive allele is assigned a lowercase letter. For Brassica rapa plants, an allele for a purple stem is dominant, so we will assign it an uppercase P. An allele for a green stem is recessive, so we will assign it a lowercase p. Some of the Brassica rapa plants we planted at the beginning of this lab had a genotype for purple stems, and some had a genotype for green stems. These plants were the parent plants. 
In setting up the Punnett square, the genotype for one parent plant is written above the square, one letter for each allele above each column. For this Punnett square, we will use the genotype for the purple-stemmed plant. Since the plant with the purple stem has two alleles for the dominant trait, it is assigned two uppercase P's. The genotype for the other parent plant is written at the left side of the Punnett square, one letter for each allele beside each row. We will use the genotype for the green-stemmed plant. Since the plant with the green stem has two alleles for the recessive trait, it is assigned two lowercase p's. Each box in the grid of the Punnett square represents a potential union between the gametes produced by each parent plant. To determine the first possible genotype, match the letter above the first column, an uppercase p, with the letter beside the first row, a lowercase p. The resulting genotype has one dominant purple allele and one recessive green allele. If a genotype contains one dominant and one recessive allele, the letter of the dominant allele is always written first. Since the allele for purple stems is dominant, a seed with this genotype would produce a plant with a purple stem. To determine the next possible genotype, Match the letter above the second column with the letter beside the first row. The resulting genotype also has one dominant purple allele and one recessive green allele. To determine the next possible genotype, match the letter above the first column with the letter beside the second row. The resulting genotype, again, has one dominant purple allele and one recessive green allele. To determine the final possible genotype, match the letter above the second column with the letter beside the second row. Once again, the resulting genotype has one dominant purple allele and one recessive green allele. A group of offspring resulting from a controlled genetics experiment is called a generation. These plants are designated as first-generation plants. Based on the Punnett square, we can predict that each first-generation plant will have a genotype with one dominant allele and one recessive allele. Since the allele for purple stems is dominant, each first-generation plant should have a purple stem. Let's look at the first-generation plants from our experiment. All of the first-generation plants had purple stems when they sprouted, but some turned green as they matured. Since all of the first-generation plants had purple stems, the principle of dominance as predicted from the results of the Punnett square has been confirmed. The second generation of plants is the result of cross-pollinating two plants of the first generation. Let's use a Punnett square to predict the outcome of the second generation plants. We set up the Punnett square using the genotypes of two of the first generation plants. Remember, each of the first generation plants has one dominant purple allele and one recessive green allele in its genotype. For the Punnett square of the second generation plants, we follow the same procedure as we did for the Punnett square of the first generation plants. Here is the completed Punnett square for the second generation plants. The Punnett square for the second generation plants shows the possible genotypes resulting from the union of gametes from two first generation plants. Based on the Punnett square, we can predict that one second generation plant will have a genotype with two dominant alleles and will have a purple stem. Two second generation plants will have genotypes with one dominant allele and one recessive allele. These plants will also have purple stems. One second generation plant will have a genotype with two recessive alleles and will have a green stem. 
According to our predictions, the second generation plants should exhibit a three to one ratio. For every three purple stemmed plants, there will be one green stemmed plant. Let's look at the second generation plants from our experiment to see if our predictions are accurate. In this group of 32 second generation plants, 24 plants have purple stems and eight plants have green stems. This is consistent with the three to one ratio. Our experiment with the second generation plants also confirms the principle of dominance. Every living organism has the ability to reproduce based on the genetic code found in its DNA. Using the principles of inheritance, we can predict, with some accuracy, the offspring of some organisms. In our last two labs, we will explore the world of environmental science. At this time, proceed with the corresponding activities. <laughs>